I love the idea of the eight ball. I love the idea of the football. You got, you know, it's it's, it's all geared up for lads down the pub, a few pints, a bit of football, a bit of pool, a bit of winner stays on, you know, a bit of banter. Um, I just think this is a, f a fantastic. Riley's done amazing here. You know, I come here bef before Riley's had it, and it was all American nine ball. And yeah, and it was it was still good. Don't get me wrong, but I just think eight ball is such much such much a, be a better game. In fact, I got. A an eight ball table in my garage and I love playing it I prefer playing it to snooker to be honest with you it's so much more fun it's so quick and I definitely think Riley's have really got on to that you know there's there's something here with the football the, the pool the darts there's there's a real link there and uh, I think you know it's um, this is this is the place to be if you want to watch a World Cup this is going to be amazing they've just watched 3D football for the first time it is unbelievable and um, without, without the glasses it's impossible with the glasses it's 50 times better than it is on normal TV, you know, you can actually see the size of the players, you know, who's in front and who's behind. Um, you actually feel like you're there, you know, so a bit be mad in here watching like th two or three hundred people <laughs> with these mad glasses on. Like nutters, stuff, you know, back to the future stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. I'd love to, you know, there's nothing, you know, I've, I've, I, love, I love playing, I hate playing bad, I hate playing below par. Um, that is something that I'll, you know, it's just, it's just not acceptable to me. Um, playing bads, you know, you can do now and again, but if you're continuously not playing well, then it can drain your, uh, it can drain you a bit and you can you become a bit hard work. So, you know, I need to find some fluency within my game. Um, so the game comes a bit easier to me. It's not been coming easy for, for a while. And I just think I've got to the point where I was a bit fed up, to be honest with you. The last two years have been a hard two years. Uh, last year, I tried to, to manage it a bit better so as I had a bit more time away from snooker. I was still playing and competing and, and had, had a good season, but it was more important that I caught, sort of stayed on an even keel and never had too many ups and downs. And uh, So hopefully like next year I can continue and find a bit more fluency. And uh, you know, I'm still only 34, so I've got, I really don't have intentions of not playing, but I sometimes say things at the time and I question, you know, why am I doing it? If I'm not enjoying it, I'm a bit of a, be a bit hard on myself. But you know, my my intentions are good. Oh, for for the game, I think it's um it's it's imperative that we have him on board. I think you'll see such a massive change in snooker. I think he's got such good contacts um, with the TV people. He's got fresh ideas. He's he's in touch with what the public want. Which is important because snooker being a, a you know a viewing sport now, I think it's important that we have someone that knows what the public really want to watch. And uh, as you can see, he's done this, done it with darts. He's turned that around, and I think you know he can do so much with snooker because it is such a love sport. It's big in China, massive in this country, and I think working with Riley's and working with Barry and uh, it'll be very successful again. I, d I definitely know that. So um, and for me, obviously, it'll be exciting again because I know that. You will generate a lot of interest in snooker and make it exciting again. I think that's what snooker needs. It needs a, a new lease of life, someone in there to give it a, a bit of a, a bit of a buzz. <laughs> and when I see that he had two nine darts, I just went, "Oh no, that geezer's not well. He's not well, mate. I'm telling you. I mean, to have two nine darts, to have one nine darts is kind of amazing. But to have two in one game, he's just, he's just." Um, uh, I, I, I couldn't even speak about it to be honest with you and uh, I mean if he carries on like that I mean I've got no chance but you know I mean I've, I've it's a good challenge you know something like I need that I mean he's, he win, he's won 15 world titles and I've only won three so I'm not going to compete in that section with him he's just relentless he's like a machine but in the 147s and the nine darters I fancy if we if we have a, like um, a cap it on five years I reckon that I could give him a good go for his money. I'll give him a five-year race to, to have, I'll have more maximums at the end of five years and he's got nine darts. So that's a challenge for Phil. I'm throwing it. The ball's back in your court, Phil. I'm up for it. <laughs> it was great. You know, putting it together was, um, wasn't was an easy thing because, um, you know, we, it was it was a lot of planning involved and, you know, just, just a... Just a it was a great, great feeling, you know, for, especially for, for Joel, who, who won it. He got the opportunity to speak in front of the press. Um, you know, there must have been about 40 media there. 
and, and I was nervous, you know, just sitting there. But um, but for him, you know, he spoke really well. So it just shows that he's got that maturity. Um, and I think for him, it was a day playing in front of TV cameras. He produced under pressure, um, and then to do the interviews, and then to, to see the way he handled and conducted himself. For me, um, that whole package was was it was impressive, and he definitely has a future. And just by speaking to him afterwards, you know, he had that desire that I had. All he wanted to do was play snooker. Um, he loves playing and uh, he was such a nice fella as well. I call him a fella because he was like a fella, you know, he's 14, like, he was built like, bigger than me. And, uh, you know, it was great, you know, and I, I, you'll definitely be seeing him in the future. I just hope that um, if we can keep on top of him, you know, like I say, you know, he's won the Future Stars, he's got the grant, but it's now about hopefully following up. I know he plays with Nigel Bond, and, um, but it'd be nice to follow that up and try and, um, I'd like to play him a few times, just see if I can pass on more of my time, you know, because I think you can, you can, it's easy handing out money in bits and pieces, you know, and, and Riley's have, have, have given him that opportunity, but I think for him now it's about having the time with a top player, like I had that when I was younger, I played with Ken Dockett and people like that, and it was the time that meant more to me. Um, so I think it's important to follow up on that, and I think that's what I'll be doing with Riley's. And, uh, you know, Riley's could have their first world champion by the time he's 21, maybe. You know, when I spoke to Riley's, I said, you know, they asked me what I wanted to do. They didn't say, look, this is what we want to do. He said, well, we want to work with what you want to do. We'd rather you be passionate about something because that's something that, you know, it'll be easier to work with you. So um, it was my idea to do something with the kids. Um, I wanted to kind of see what was out there. Um, and uh, so, I, I did, you know, Riley's have now kind of have got their head around and, and, and of maybe kind of having this as an ongoing basis, maybe for the next three years minimum. And uh, But I definitely think there's some longevity in this um, because, you know, just the youngsters and that, they're so grateful for the opportunities, if you like. And I think with Riley's, with all the snooker clubs that they have, to have that kind of enthusiasm, it just links so well together. They, they, they have, um, they're all good players, don't get me wrong. Um, whether they've got what it takes to win a World Cup, that's debatable. They haven't done it f for, for a long time, and I think sometimes it's, you've got to look at the usual suspects, Brazil, Argentina, Italy, you know, but I definitely think England have, um, with Rooney, and a couple of other players there. They've definitely got some star quality players, um, but whether they can do it for a month, uh, match in, match out, whether they can do it at the final stages, is, you know, they're, they're right getting to the quarters and the semis, but you're only halfway through the tournament when you get to the semis. It's about doing it when it matters, and that's in the semis and the final, so. But they're, 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 I'm sure that they're, um, they're up for it. Spain. I'd like to see Argentina, though. They've got some great players. They've got Tevez, Messi, and Melito up front. Oh, that's going to be a fearsome little strike force. Um, I think USA, really. And that, that, and I, but I think USA and England will get through their group. And I just think maybe USA might be able to cause a few. They're so positive, isn't they? It's po positive men are our choose. We've got to go out there to win the game. Arsenal. <laughs> uh, I will be watching the matches. I'm gonna be watching on my little barge boat that I've just purchased, and uh, I actually bought it just for the World Cup because I thought I've got all this summer. But now I've been here, I'm thinking I've got to find a local Riley's, especially if it's kitted out like this one. So probably gonna be bouncing between the two. But Riley's looks good, especially with the pool table. Get a bit of practicing during 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 the matches. It's boring if you watch it on your own. Who wants to watch football on your own? Uh.